Welcome back to another exciting episode of Jamdam Drones. Today we will be exploring the control menu of the DJI Mini SC Fly App. All you need to know about the DJI Mini SE control menu. We start by hitting the Go Fly button in the DJI Fly app, and then we'll be taken to the in flight menu. Now, as usual, we take off, and we are just taking off now. And guys, remember if you're enjoying the content, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. So we're going to keep going and we are just heading out into the middle of the field here just to give you guys a nice view and uh, we're going straight into the menu now. So we're hitting the three little dots up by the upper right corner and now we'll be brought to the menu. We press control and we're looking at the three different flight modes that are available for the Mini SE. We'll start by looking at the Cine, Position and Sport mode. Now we're going to start with cine mode first. This is the slowest mode and you use this mode for when you're taking cinematic shots or when you want to have a slow moving drone. It's very good for dramatic shots as well. So there you see it creeping along and now we go to position mode. Position mode is the normal flying speed of this drone and we're just going to see a video of that going forward. Just a little bit faster than cine mode. This one going at about 9 or 10 miles per hour. Now we're at sport mode which is the fastest mode of the three and you'll notice that there's a dramatic increase, just take a look at this, a dramatic increase in the speed of the drone. Please also note that while you're flying in this mode, these sensors will be turned off. So be careful when you're flying in sports mode. Next up is our unit section which looks at the different measurements that our speed can be measured in. Metric will measure our speed in meters per second. And we're just going to take a look at what that looks like. So I'm selecting metric and here we go guys, check this out. So as we're moving forward, it is going to be in meters per second. And there you see the MS at the bottom, you see it increasing. And as I go backwards and forward, you see that the unit has now changed to MS. Now we go to metric, which is kilometers per hour. So we're going to take a look at that as well. So now it is in kilometers per hour. And just like before, it's measuring our distance or speed. Now the third is the Imperial, which is my favorite. This one is miles per hour. So this is the one that I use all the time when I'm flying. I don't use the other two. I don't really see it as necessary for my purpose. But if you're into using the other measurement, then sure you can go ahead. Up next is gimbal modes. Gimbal modes speak to that structure that holds the camera in place and allows the shot to be stable while you're flying. There are two modes that exist in this feature. There is follow mode and FPV mode. We're going to be looking at both modes to see what it looks like through the camera. Let's take a look at what follow mode looks like through the eyes of the camera. Hey drone fans, notice how when the drone turns to the left and turns to the right, the camera stays locked in place. This is what we call follow mode. As we're flying through the air, the 3-axis gimbal does its best to keep the shot stable. I use follow mode most of the times for recording, especially when I'm doing aerial photography. Next we're moving to FPV mode. FPV mode is a little bit different. FPV mode involves the, the drone tilting from side to side, behaving like an FPV drone. While the drone is in this state, the camera will move with the drone. Up next we have advanced gimbal settings. In this menu, we are given the option of changing the way our gimbal behaves. That is how fast it moves up and down as well as the smoothness. Let us tap the arrow to see what this means. Pitch speed as you can see at the top is the rotation of the gimbal. And this ranges from 1 to about 100. Now the pitch speed that the drone comes with from the factory will be about 10 and the smoothness would be about 15. I have since realized that the longer you put the smoothness, that is the higher you put the smoothness, is the smoother the stop will be. I'll tell you guys the combination that I use when I'm flying. 
Now that you can see in the video, the gimbal is slowly moving down because the pitch smoothness is set to 21. Now, this is when the pitch speed is a lot higher. See how fast it's moving now. Now, the combination that I use is a pitch speed of 9 with a pitch smoothness of about, say, 20 or 15, depending on what I'm looking for in the shot. You can experiment with this until you are comfortable with a pitch speed and smoothness that suits your needs. Just in case you want to go back to the factory settings, the reset button is at the bottom and you, if you hit that, it will go back to the pitch speed being about 10 and the smoothness being about 15. Comment down below what pitch smoothness and pitch speed you use with your DJI Mini SE. In the same sub-menu, we see allow upward gimbal rotation. This is a very handy feature if it is that you want to add a little bit more angle to your shot. Observe on screen as the camera rocks all the way up an additional 20 degrees and it is recentered again. This is with gimbal rotation on. What we are going to see now is with gimbal rotation off. See that we are now limited and it's now 20 degrees less than what we had before. Again drone fans, it depends on what you're looking for in your shot. Up next is gimbal calibration. You calibrate your gimbal if it is that you're prompted to do so in the pre-flight check or if you see your gimbal acting funny. We are now given the option to perform the calibration auto or manual. I choose auto since it does the work for me. Now you want to have the drone on a level surface while this is happening. Please ensure that you remove the gimbal guard or gimbal cover before you start this process as the gimbal will be moving up and down left and right and it's gonna need that space to move. Once you see calibration successful, the process is complete. Next up is our gimbal recenter feature. We can hit this feature if it is that the gimbal is in a position and we automatically want it to snap back to the center position. Hitting this feature twice will cause the gimbal to rock up and down and be leveled. Next is the stick modes and this is where we get to see just how customizable this drone really is. Stick modes will give us the option of choosing the way our joysticks behave. I'm going to click on the feature and we can all see what it entails. We are then brought to this window where we have full power to customize the behavior of the joysticks. Look carefully at each function before you make your selection and be careful when you're flying for the first time after making your selection. The custom feature allows us to manually change the direction buttons, that is our joysticks that we use to fly. In the custom feature, we can drag and drop the functions that we want on the joysticks. Unless you're really uncomfortable with the default layout, there's really no need to change this setting. Fly with caution drone fans, because this one can be a doozy. Once you're through making your changes, you can hit the save button located to the bottom of the screen. And just like that, your customization will be saved. Now we move to RC calibration. Tap the arrow to activate this feature. After the drone is powered off, it will allow us to calibrate the controller. Ensure that you have enough power on the controller before you start this process. Ensure the sticks are in a centered position before you hit start. Let's do that now. And now we have three different parts of the controller that we can calibrate. We can calibrate the left joystick, or we can calibrate the right joystick or we can also calibrate the gimbal wheel which is that wheel that we use to control the camera moving up and down this is great so the gimbal reacts well to the inputs from our controller so drone fans when do we calibrate our joysticks well if you look on screen here you'll see a little bit of a white section going down and that means our left joystick needs to be calibrated because it is giving out inputs even though we're not touching it. To calibrate the joysticks, you want to push up on both joysticks, then push down on both joysticks, push to the left on both joysticks, and then push to the right on both joysticks. Calibrate the gimbal wheel by turning it left or turning it right as seen in the video above. Next is our advanced menu. In this menu, we can make even more fine-tuned customizations to the behavior of the drone. In the advanced menu, we have the power to move these lines on the graph and it affects the way the drone flies. There are three graphs here and they are under normal mode and sports mode. Let's go to the first graph to see what it's about. The first graph says throttle up and throttle down. 
By dragging your finger along the graph, you create an S shape. And like any other graph, you have the Y axis and you also have the X axis. When you're making changes to these drone pans, you want to do it very incrementally. Do not make extreme changes. Slowly adjust it and see what suits you best. Now we're moving to the graph in the middle. The graph in the middle says rudder right and rudder left. In other words, yawing right and yawing left. This affects the speed at which the drone will yaw right or left. Again, you want to increase this incrementally, that is, bit by bit to see what works. And the final graph, guys, we have is the forward right or back left, backward, that is, and left direction. So this will affect the way, the speed in which the drone moves as it goes in these directions. If there are drone fans out there who have a working combination that you can share in the comment section, that'd be great. Otherwise, you can just do what I do and just leave it at default. It flies just fine the way it is. Up next is the flight tutorial and you would click on that if it is you want to go through some pre-flight checks and also diagnostics to be run on your drone. So it will it's a basically a 10 minute process, I won't be going through that. But for those of you who have the drone, you can go through the process and become more familiar with it. Now last but not least is the repair to aircraft link. Now in rare instances, and I mean very rare instances, your controller might not recognize your drone or your drone might not recognize your controller. And if that should ever happen to you, you want to make your way to the control menu to this section at the bottom and you click on that and then once you click on that, you're going to be prompted to press the power button on the drone. After doing that, you should be linked again. That is the controller and the drone should be linked. There is more. plenty more to learn about the DJI Mini SE. Why not check out my channel and since you're here, drop a like and subscribe. Remember guys, the more we practice, the better we become. Jamdung drones over and out.